With how incredible the Souls series is, each game is bound to have its flaws. Last time we talked about the best things from each Souls game, but today I want to look at the worst features from Demon Souls all the way to Elden Ring. And once again, there's timestamps for each game if you need them. Starting with Demon Souls, we have the boss fights. Understand that my first Souls game was Dark Souls 3, where I absolutely fell in love with the boss fights before playing the rest of the games in the series. The bosses in Demon Souls were pretty underwhelming for me after experiencing the incredible boss quality from games like Dark Souls 3 and Sekiro. I still think they were pretty enjoyable overall, most of them just felt like gimmick fights instead of real combat, which I'm personally not a huge fan of. Obviously it gets some slack for being the first installment of the Souls series and it does still have some great boss fights such as Flame Lurker and King Alon, but it's hard for me to ignore the fact that the bosses just feel like the weakest part of this game. I consider bosses such as the Storm King to be really great aesthetically, but I don't get as much enjoyment from the actual fight itself. Even the higher quality bosses just felt too easy for me compared to the rest of the series. I also think the world tendency system is obviously worth mentioning since it can be pretty unforgiving to newer players combined with its lack of explanation, but I like that they added some variety with quests and NPC battles in different world tendencies. Punishing you for dying is a pretty classic from software move, but it still feels like a slap in the face for a game that encourages death as a learning mechanic. Obviously you can jump off the ledge in the nexus after you beat a boss to avoid dealing with this, but what new player is realistically going to think to do that? Moving on to Dark Souls, we have the unfinished areas, aka basically the second half of the entire game. I could talk about the clunky gameplay due to no omnidirectional rolling, meaning you can only roll in four directions, but that's a problem you can get used to. What I can't get used to is how weak the areas after an Orlando are compared to the first half of this game. I don't think many people will disagree here, and I really don't think the whole second half is bad. It's just very clear it was rushed and doesn't have the same magical inner connectivity that the first half did. Ending such an incredible first half with Anor Londo and Orenstein and Smo as the boss, it was pretty disappointing getting lost to Izalith with the bed of chaos to follow it up. I'm pretty sure Miyazaki even apologized for that one. But like I said, some of the areas and bosses were still decent, but we also got areas such as the Tomb of Giants. I know there's a quest you can do to get the Sunlight Maggot helmet for this area, but it honestly doesn't make it too much better. I will say they have some pretty fun bosses like Gravelord Nido and Gwyn, so maybe I'll just consider the weakness to be the level design in the second half. On the bright side, the DLC revived this issue and kept me from going hollow, but it still doesn't justify the ceaseless discharge. Anyway, moving on to one that's a bit more juicy, we have Dark Souls 2. While I'm tempted to say the worst part of this game is the adaptability stat, I have to say that it's the boss runs. They're awful. A lot of people have complaints about enemy placement in this game or how tons of them randomly get thrown at you in groups, but the worst part is that they do this on your way to the bosses as well. The run to the blue smelter demon in the DLC was without a doubt the most ridiculous and unfun experience in the entire series. You have to run through an area that makes you slower while you get shot at by archers accompanied by as many basic enemies as they could possibly throw at you. And the worst part is, it's all for a reskin boss with delayed moves to throw you off and it's something you paid for. I get that they wanted to push the boundaries of difficulty a bit in this game, but this was just not the way to do it. Sir Alone has an infamous boss run too with tons of enemies chasing you and shooting fireballs at you the whole way through, it's almost impossible to make it to the boss without taking any damage. It got to the point where I was shaking every time I was close to beating a boss, but not from the thrill of finally being close to winning, it was out of fear that I might have to run all the way back again. Even if you do manage to run past all the enemies and beat the boss, they never de-aggro, so as soon as the fog well disappears when the boss is dead, they all rush in at once and continue chasing you. I don't know if this was as big of a problem for anyone else, but this was without a doubt the most frustrating part of this game for me and makes me not want to play through certain parts again. The only reason I didn't say adaptability is because in my first playthrough, I didn't even know I was supposed to level it, and while it was a pain in the ass, I got used to it. A little bonus for this section is the frigid outskirts, that's really all I have to say. If you've played the DLC, you know what I'm talking about. I'm happy at least it wasn't required, but as a Souls player, I want to beat everything, especially if I paid extra for it. Dark Souls 2 is still an amazing game, I just think its flaws are much more clear than the other games. Moving on to King Bloodborne, we have The Inconvenience. In case you were wondering from what I said in the previous video about what problems caused me not to want to play this game dozens of times, this is it. Without a 
of doubt my main issue with this game is the healing. I understand what they were doing and it makes sense, it's just such a pain in the early game that it makes the experience less enjoyable for me. Like most people, the first time I played Bloodborne, I was stuck on Father Gascoigne for a while and I had to go back and farm blood vials every single time. It was another problem where I wasn't excited because I beat the boss, I was excited to not have to do 10 minutes of farming in between runs again. Like I said before, this is more of an early game issue, but when I started getting to the more challenging bosses, I was more likely to just die on purpose if I messed up at the beginning of a run because it just wasn't worth wasting any heals. I would have much rather had them just limit our healing to 5 or 10 vials at the beginning but have them replenish upon resting, but that's the other issue. You can't rest at the lamps, you have to go all the way back to the hunter's dream if you want to reset, making farming a huge pain and combined with the tedious load times on PS4, this was more like the hunter's nightmare. The same issue goes with bullets and while this system seems a bit more practical for that aspect, it still caused some hesitation when parrying. I know that they said all of this was designed for a reason, but it doesn't mean that I have to like it. Other than that, I really have no problems with Bloodborne besides the obvious 30 FPS cap, but maybe one day. I think enough people have complained about it by now, please just remaster the game from soft. Next up, we have Dark Souls 3. My reason here is going to contradict myself from other videos, but it's the linear level design. This wasn't a huge problem for me personally, but the level quality also suffered a bit as a result of this. Meaning, most of the levels in the beginning weren't great, and I think at least if they had a bit more branching paths and shortcuts, they would have been a bit more enjoyable. I don't have a problem with the levels being more straightforward since I found myself lost a lot in the other games, but I didn't like how much they strayed away from their original level design philosophy. I think they picked it up a bit after Abyss Watchers, but it was just hard for me to enjoy the lesser quality levels knowing there weren't really any other paths to take. Aside from this, I have to mention the fan service since I know a lot of people were upset about this when the game first came out. I didn't have a ton of issues with it, but Dark Souls 3 was also the first Souls game I played. Going back, I can see how people were annoyed by this, but I think it was a really good way to end the Dark Souls series and the DLC more than made up for it. I do think it was a little bit too easy to R1 spam through most of the basic enemies as well, but it didn't really hurt the game too much, especially since the bosses weren't affected by this. I think it's probably the best starter Souls game for a newbie, maybe even more so than Elden Ring, and it just kind of felt like that's what they were going for. Also, since it was the one that got me into the series, it's hard for me to hate on it too much. Moving on, to my precious baby, we have Sekiro. This is honestly the closest thing we've ever had to a perfect game in my opinion because I really can't think of anything wrong with it. I know a lot of people have issues with the lack of build variety in the game forcing you to play a specific way, but the game just wouldn't work with anything else. I do wish they added at least a few different weapons, even if they were just for New Game Plus, like the spears that some of the enemies have, but this didn't bother me too much. Like I said in the previous video, a super heavy strength build or magic in this game just wouldn't work due to the flow of combat. The real biggest problem I have with this game is more of a personal thing, but if you'd rather me point out a specific problem, I could say the spirit emblems because I think they should just be free. Finding these in the world is a pain and money isn't super easy to come across if you want to buy them and not to mention the price actually goes up the more you buy. This made me not want to experiment with prosthetic tools or certain skills as much because I was too concerned about running out of spirit emblems. And it's not like you can use an infinite amount of these, I believe you can only get a max of like 20 per life, so it doesn't make sense why you would need to buy them. That's more of a nitpick, and I'm sure they had their reasons, but my real issue with this game is the learning curve. It is impossible to get anyone into this game without them completing basically the first half, and then it just starts to make sense. It might be because I couldn't get out of my button mashing habit from the other Souls games, but it took me three attempts of trying this game for me to finally get into it. And even then, the combat didn't click for me until I'd beaten the entire game, even though they're clearly trying to push you to use the right approach throughout the entire experience. Like I said, this is a super personal thing, but for some reason it's hard to understand what people mean when they say it's a rhythm game until later, which prevents so many people from experiencing this masterpiece. And speaking of masterpiece, why not say hello to Elden Ring? This one was tough because while I've discussed my gripes with Elden Ring in the past, there really wasn't one big thing I think they did the worst. But then I realized there definitely is, the difficulty balance. And hear me out, I don't mean that it's too easy or too hard, I actually think it's both of these. The worst part about Elden Ring, in my opinion, is the inconsistency of difficulty through bosses and areas. And to be fair, since it's open world, there's not really any solution for this, it's just one of the negatives that come with these types of games. I found myself incredibly disappointed when I went through a dungeon I didn't find until the later game just to one-shot the boss in three seconds. It would have been cool if enemies and bosses scaled with your level a little bit, but then it would have defeated the purpose they created for new players to be able to leave and come back when they
when they're a higher level. But the problem with the difficulty goes both ways. There are extremely broken weapons in the game that make it significantly easier and some weapons that aren't even really viable. Nothing in this game is a challenge if you use rivers of blood the whole way through, but that's fine, that's your choice. The real problem is the spirit summons, another thing that is supposedly your choice, but not really. Do you think they designed the godskin duo assuming everyone would want to fight them fairly and get stomped on over and over, or do you think they designed them in hopes that you would use a summon? That's why the difficulty balance feels a bit strange sometimes because you feel more forced to use items to help you than you normally would. This wasn't a huge issue in Elden Ring, but it was definitely the worst aspect of that game.